Hello, welcome to the Run Testers. I am Nick. And Kieran. And this is our review of the Nike Zoom X Streakfly. So the Nike Street Fly enters Nike's range as kind of the lightweight, lower profile racer built for kind of 5k and 10k events, you know, with the Vaporfly and Alphafly more designed as kind of marathon shoes. Uh, it is cheaper than those shoes as well, quite considerably so. It's £134.95 in the UK and $160 in the US. It's got a 32mm stack height over heel and a 6mm drop from heel to toe. Uh, the shoe is really, really very light. It's 182 grams in my UK size 9, which is just 6.4 ounces. Uh, it actually comes in even lighter than something like the Adidas Takumi Sen, um, and obviously lighter than all the kind of shoes with full length carbon plates out there. A very nice kind of thin uh, mesh upper that with quite a decent amount of padding at the heel, it has to be said, given that this is such a lightweight shoe. Uh, the tongue is pretty minimal. We've got slightly offset laces, and the shoe has got a really nice upper, it's fair to say. It holds the foot in a really secure but comfortable way. Uh, the midsole is Zoom X, obviously the same foam as the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly, but there is no full length carbon plate. Instead, what you get is a kind of small, kind of p midfoot kind of shank or plate there, just again to, to provide a little bit of stability kind of around the midfoot and kind of speed transition onto the forefoot there when you're rate doing these kind of shorter races, whilst keeping the shoe very light, but you don't obviously you do lack a little bit of the propulsion of a full carbon plate. Then on the outsole, you've got a Kind of typical nike kind of covering with a decent amount of forefoot rubber and then there's kind of two little strips at the back there this is gripped really well for me i have to say on anything down to kind of 200 meter reps it's got really nice amount of grip good traction when you're turning corners at speed you know which is ideal for a short distance racing shoe Quick word on fit, uh, Kieran. You love the fit of the shoe, right? Well, I really like the fact that I can slip into them nice and easy. Yeah, they they they're, they're <laughs> nice and wide for sort of if you've got slightly wider feet. They they're nice and roomy in the toe box. Mm. I ran in my size. I would say that they're if anything they, they do come up sort of slightly long in the toe. Mm. They're a sort of overall very roomy fit. So I have hesitated about whether or not I would be tempted to half size down. Yeah. If you like it nice and roomy, stay on your size. I think. If, yeah. Could be the case. Like, I, I found it very long at the toe box as well. Yeah. I agree. When you mentioned that, and I put it on, for me, it's probably too roomy at the toe box, and I have a very narrow foot, and I get like a big fold in the, in the kind of upper. Like, it's not really a problem. I've used the shoe. It's too much room, I'd like, certainly in a shorter distance racing shoe. So I would go half size down, and if you have a very narrow foot, maybe that would be what I'd suggest, just because it does seem very long. But at the same time, it's not an unpleasant amount of room, especially if you plan on using the shoe for anything longer. It feels <laughs> like a very natural fit. Yeah, it's it, a lovely material. It sort of wraps around your foot rather than kind of constricting but all right on to the run test um kieran you had the shoe first what do you think <laughs> I, I, I loved it i loved it it was one of those shoes that the minute i put it on it was super comfortable on the foot in the house and i couldn't wait to get out and then when i got out and started running in it, it it's fast it's kind of poppy it's punchy it's lively it just put a big grin on my face i hadn't been doing a lot of fast <laughs> sort of speed work at the time but it that session it made me just go and smash out loads of kind of fast interval miles and I, I, I loved it. There's a really, really pronounced feel with this, which is very different from some of the other kind of super shoes, I think, even yeah. talk about Vapors, Alphas, uh, if you talk about Takumi Sen, the Adios Pro, is that once you put it on, it's almost like you can feel that midsole foam almost fold and compress. Yeah. And you can feel the ground sort of rising towards you. And it doesn't <laughs> quite sort of come through, but it, it takes you close to the ground. There's much more of a kind of ground contact feel coming through these shoes. And that is presumably because there's no plate in here. You're not getting a kind of bit of a stiffness or a bit no. of protection. The, the foam is there on its own and you can feel that. It's a very different feel. Having said that, I, I do think when you're up on your kind of forefoot to midfoot, I think these are these are fast. They are lively. I mean, I, I, if you're going to compare them to something like the Vaporfly, I think I'd still prefer <laughs> overall to run in the Vaporfly across different distances for the versatility. But I really enjoyed running in these shoes. I, I like putting them on. I have to say one more thing. I've also done really randomly. I went out and did like a 13 miler carrying eight kilos in a pack. Okay. Very slow plod to see how these would hold up. Just out of interest, I wanted to see how the foam held up in terms of um, its its durability. And they weren't awful at that <laughs> either. You know, I wouldn't suggest it, but you know, it really accentuated that feeling of the ground coming through. Yeah. Um, and it did. I do have this question. Somebody sort of criticized me in one of the other videos for sort of saying would you this is a 5k 10k shoe would you take it up to the marathon but i wanted to find out what it would feel like over a longer distance and up to that half 
I think if I wasn't wearing a pack and I was running fast, I think you could run a half in this. I think if you're a really good runner with great form and you're fast and you're going to be doing like a, a you know a 230 marathon hmm. you might be able to run a marathon in these if I you're going to do a four and a four hour marathon you don't want to run in these but. i think you could run a marathon in these i just certainly wouldn't i just yeah. think it'll be it'll, you'd do much faster in the bay fly or any other carbon shoe um even over half i think so i think this is a real for me a dedicated it does feel like a short shoe i yeah. think because it's six millimetre drop as well, it's slightly lower drop than a lot of those shoes, and the foam compresses so much, it almost feels like less yeah. than that. I think um, yeah. you feel you do feel flatter. Yeah, for sure. It's exactly, not. It's not yeah. like you don't get that tip. Yeah, and I, as someone who heel strikes, and I'm running at my normal race paces, kind of half marathon, ten k marathon, five k as well, really. And then I, when I was doing reps in the shoe, more midfoot, four foot, you do activate the plate a bit better. I think you get a bit more out of it. I went straight into a horrible indoor session, like the hardest session of my life, running kind of weird 700 meter reps after a hard 2k and some 200 meters and it, it was great for that because it was really protective compared to the spikes and stuff like i use for that normally and fast just as fast and it was great this this is really good rubber this grips yeah. fantastically well up on those kind of 200s around the corner really nice grip and then i use it for me i don't like it for easy stuff basically because i feel like a i'm it's a bit like ah oh, I, I know how much better this feels if i just put a bit more into it yeah and it just feels like you just kind of like blunk, blunk, and it's a bit too soft and not really doing much so i I certainly wouldn't go jogging in it again after doing a couple of those kind of little jogs. But, um, I, you know, on those jogs, I was going like, I was with my friend, I was going, oh, should we just speed up for a bit? Because I know it's going to feel great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If, you, if, you, if you're not sure, if you go out on a day and you think, well, I feel, I've, I yeah. feel a bit joggy, but I'm, you know, put this on. And if you need to do some speed work, it will come. Because I think it makes you, you know, it does give you that feeling like you want to go and have a lively run. Yeah, it's, 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 I've done it. I've done kind of long track reps as well. I did like, a kind of series of doing 400s of like 200 meter float recovery and it's nice i think it's a good shoe and i where i struggle with it is i think it just it's just probably a bit too soft for me for yeah. anything longer than probably even even 5k i think i'd be happier in a shoe that had a bit more kind of i had more in the midsole uh, or a slightly firmer feel just because i feel like i start to get lost a bit in that foam at times because it's still a high enough stack basically to kind of be very spongy but then the rebound is certainly there everyone knows zoom x has got plenty of bounce in it it's fantastic foam but I don't always feel that you're getting the same rebound and the same kind of firm and smooth transition that you get from a shoe with a plate. Yeah. So the other thing, Nick, you recently did a five mile race in these. Yeah. Talk us through how that went. <laughs> so right in the sweet spot of what the shoe's aimed for in theory, five miles, 8K. Um, the flat race, did a good time. And here's a PB, like I did a 26, 28. Um, I don't know, my previous PB was probably in a 10K race. Actually, I think in that 10K race, I might have been a bit quicker than that. But um, the shoe felt really good. So at the start, it felt fantastic. You know, really lively, really sharp. You know, got into a group nicely. Had a bit of a wobble, I'd say, around 5 to 7K, where actually I just feel like I was running the shoe and I was still running fire. I was going, I feel like I'd be turning over slightly better in a shoe with a carbon plate. But it's, yeah. you know, it's all, this is all perception. I, still, yeah. I was still running just as fast, I think, as if I had a carbon plate shoe on potentially. But I did feel like I'd say, you have to put a lot into the shoe to get the similar kind of stuff out of it that you get from a carbon plate shoe more naturally, I'd say. Um, then at the end, it felt great again because, you know, it's really light. And when you go for a kick finish, you pick up and it really helps you pick up your legs when they're really heavy and tired at the end of it being such a light shoe. So I think it was great, but I think it's actually interesting that I think in my 10K PB, I ran in the Asics Metaspeed Sky, another reasonably low stack super shoe. I think I ran faster five miles than that. And I think actually that's probably a shoe that I will use for short races ahead of this. Again, much more expensive. We're going to talk about price in the verdicts. But, and then this week, uh, so, I've, so the race was good. I enjoyed the race in the shoe. I think it'd be a great, I would definitely for five miles and 10K would be back in the Vaporfly next time or a carbon shoe. 5K, I think it's probably a lot closer to call. I think you could run fantastic 5Ks in this. Um, again, especially if you're, you know, you're pacing it well. And if you start to struggle, I think it just doesn't give you as much support as some of those super shoes do. Wait, I mean, it's an interesting thing. We've talked about this in another video we've done with the Takumi Sen. Yeah. And it's a kind of question is, does it replace some of those existing shoes mm. we've already gotten really love? And, it, it, you know, I, I feel the same way. I feel for very specific use, in my use case for this would be, I want a, a shoe that I'm going to take on the track to do 400, 800 meter repeats, or I'm going to go and do some very kind of, some mile intervals, shorter distance. Yeah with shorter recoveries in between. And so it's a very sort of specific thing that I'd probably end up using this for. Yeah. Can you, you know, can I still use the Vaporfly for those? Absolutely. Can I use the Adios Pro for those? Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a bit of a question about, do I need to buy the shoe or add it to my collection? I think it's, yeah, it's whether you're coming at it to it fresh, because you don't want to compare, you know, loads and loads of comparisons to shoes that cost a lot more than it, maybe a bit futile, but at the same time, everyone has those shoes. If you're looking at the street floor, you probably have it. And I took the Vaporfly down for a track session this week, just running a hard mile, a couple of 400s, a couple of 200s, and it 
it really does feel amazing. <laughs> you know, it's Nike made a very good shoe. It's struggling now to convince us that they need another very good shoe. So that's the problem, I guess. And, uh, and yeah. up against, I guess the other thing was sort of people were thinking about whether or not this was a replacement for the Peg Turbo. Yeah, that's a strange comparison. This is a this is a soft <laughs> racing shoe. I would. Peg Turbo, you could grind. Peg also had React foam underneath yeah. the Zoomex. It made it much more firm, durable ride, high drop. Like, this is a kind of, for me, quite a low drop, powerhouse, super shoe, racing shoe. You know, Peg, this also will last maybe a tenth of what the Peg Turbo lasts. <laughs> and on that note, durability yeah. is an interesting point. And both of us feel like this isn't necessarily going to hold up as long as some other shoes. On my one, I've got a little bit of split in the, in the um, outsole sort of rubber here going into the midsole. There's a little chip already. Mm. And I haven't done a huge amount of miles in these because most of what I've done has been sort of shorter and faster. Yeah. And I do worry a little bit also with that foam about how it overall, once you've got a lot of miles in there, whether it continues to kind of respond basically. This is a very, very fun shoe to run in. And the price is great. We'll talk about the price a bit more now. I think a lot of people will enjoy this. But for me, the bottom line is that Nike, Nike, already, Nike already solved the racing shoe dilemma for short <laughs> races with the Vaporfly, and then a lot of other brands copied that, and there's some other good options there. But like, and now to come back and say, would you like a different shoe for 5K, 10K? I don't think I would. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, I get that there's, you know, people are trying to carve out another kind of niche area for a shoe and do something different. All the brands are sort of stepping into this space to try and make another little area that will buy another shoe for a rotation. But I, it's interesting because actually with the Vaporfly, I mean, even the Alpha Fly to a certain extent came along, and I sort of thought Vapor Fly is still better for me for the marathon. But I don't know, maybe they're never going to make a better shoe. Than <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably, yeah, like, yeah. You've already done it for, for many things. And there's a versatility there with the Vapor Fly that you're not going to get with something like this. Yeah. I, I love running in this shoe, and if, you know, it's at the price point, I think it's really interesting. It's a, if you've got a bit of cash spare, it's a fun shoe to buy and go and have a, have a play with for sure. Yeah. You're not going to be disappointed, I don't think. No, definitely. I think. Bottom line for me, absolute pure performance. If you're just got to spend any money and get the best shoe for your short races, I would probably get the Vaporfly ahead of this, and I probably would get the Axis Metaspeed Sky ahead of this because that's also a low stack, low drop, you know, carb full carbon shoe, which has you know, I think slightly better performance over towards the back end of those even short races when you are. I mean, five k, ten k. These aren't short races. You're still mm. going to be struggling towards the end, yeah. and there's a long period where you want to kind of be pushed through. But if you want an option without a play, if you want a very, if you do want an, actually a shoe that feels it does feel close to the Vaporfly than the traditional racing flat. This is more the Vaporfly than it is the Streak, but it does have that very soft foam that compresses, and you do feel a bit of ground, a lot of ground coming towards you, like you say. And if you prefer that feel, uh, and it's a bit more stable, and you want a you know really energetic, lightweight shoe, this does exist now. And if you've held off buying a super shoe because you are a short distance racer, you don't see the point. Now there's an option for 135 pounds. Yeah. That price. I'm still convinced that price will rise like they did with the Vaporfly, the Proto Edition, but I think there'll always be a version around that price. That's what's happened with the Vaporfly. And that is a very good price for a shoe that you should save for once a week, really hard track sessions, the odd race, and it will last you a decent amount of time. Then. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot, there's an awful lot to be said for that, that once a week where you're mm. putting on a shoe that makes you know that it's go time, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is the one that I put on to feel like I'm going to go to do my hard, fast session. And there are people who don't like doing those sessions in carbon shoes. They like to feel feel the ground under their feet a bit more. They like to know that they're not getting a carbon boost every time they run. And this is a great option for that. And it is so much cheaper. Uh, they're very, very it's lightweight. Cool. That's a big plus. Like, it's nice for running, but it's also nice for traveling. Like you say, you, you <laughs> take it down to Bath in your backpack. <laughs> the only thing I say is like, at this price, I'm not sure I can think of a better racing shoe for 5K, 10K. So that is, at the end of the day, if you're only going to spend 140 pounds, yeah. I probably would probably would buy this. Yeah. So that's interesting for those races. I think I try, top of my head, nothing's coming to mind. If you, I, I might even get the Salty Endorphin Speed ahead of it, just for my use case, where I do do a lot more long running and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's, it's a heavier, not as fast shoe, but it's much more versatile. Okay. Well, the other big thing we should compare it to is the Adidas Takumi Sen. We're going to do a full video on this. Really dive into this deep. But overall, I'm probably slightly team Takumi because it's got a firmer, more kind of aggressive propulsive feel as opposed to this kind of softness and i think i prefer that for even intervals and then it, i think it's a bit more versatile I'd probably go a bit longer than the street fly i'd agree with all of that really i have my only problem really with the takumi sen is I've, i struggle to get into them initially i find the, the the uppers and the overall kind of comfort a little bit awkward for me then the, the fit doesn't wrap my foot and make me feel mm. quite as comfortable as these do so when i when i put these on they sort of disappear on my foot i, I love that feeling yeah and i even i don't even mind that sort of clo more closeness to the ground as well it's a thing that i personally quite like when i'm running so mm. but yeah i think this can be sent i've probably got a little bit more versatility there's a bit more protection there and i, I think they probably have a bit more range 
mm. in them overall. Again, but, they're a little bit more expensive again, I suppose, is the other thing to say. Although I think, so basically, Takumi, uh, so Street Fly Opera and Takumi, and there you go. That would make me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mix those two things together. Come on, Addy, Nike, what are you waiting for? <laughs> uh, so I guess, yeah, by the way, if you've already got a Vape Fly, there's no real need to go out and get this. If you've already got a carbon shoe in general, and if you want the pure best performing shoe for 5K, 10K, I would splash out and get the Vape Fly or the Metal Speed Sky probably. But if you haven't got those, and you do want a slightly different feel, if you want a very fun shoe, and you want to spend 135 pounds instead of yeah. 200 pounds. It's a lot of fun to run in this. Great shoe. Yeah, it's a nice new option to have. That's it, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Have you tried the Street Fly? What do you think of it? Are you going to be throwing away your Vaporfly and using this instead? Um, we have loads of videos on the channel right now, don't we, Kieran? We do. We do. We've gone Street Fly mad. Street Fly bananas. And Takumi Sen bananas. Bananas everywhere. <laughs> uh, so go watch all of those videos, please. And so, yeah, go check those out. Like, subscribe, ring the little bell so you get told when we do more Street Fly content. We'll get some, we'll try and get another race video in if we can in these, and maybe some racing in the Takumi as well. But all in all, yeah, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Thank you for watching.